everybody back to the Gamecocks Dynasty today we have a chance to start our season 5-0 and for the first time in this series and we are here in season 3 taking on the UCF Golden Knights as you can see both of these teams have struggled defensively in the passing game but both are very efficient defending the run the Knights have five sacks on the season we have an average about three and they average about an interception a game we do not get a lot of takeaways however but today it's not going to be easy it's not going to be fun but the Gamecocks need to get a win today if they want to continue their hopes at an SEC championship because losing to a one and two team on the road is not a recipe for or at home is not a recipe for success so today we get to see Julius Canary for the third straight game and look to see him contribute as the quarterback and as a mobile scrambling option behind the line of scrimmage now today is our chance at a 5-0 start as Thomas Mayhew will look to get us underway as he looks to kick it off facing the student section he is going to boot this one away and the game is underway South Carolina is going to kick it away to Griffin he will kneel it down and Mikey Keene will come out for the Golden Knights they're going to have their first second and seven it's going to be a read option to Keene he's going to run it and flip all around they're going to credit him with the first down do not disrespect his legs he's a very very quality scrambler as a quarterback first and 10 Keene's going to go to Demarcus Bowman who quickly gets cut down that's a two-yard loss for the Knights second and seven now Keene's in a bit of a pistol set he is going to bring his man Townsend in motion. It's going to be a fake to Bowman. Fires, and he's got his tight end, Jordan Davis, wide open. Davis down the sideline, and he's got a big gain. 51 yards, Jordan Davis got open off of the miscommunication by the Gamecocks defense. Debo Williams lost his man in coverage now, and the Knights are deep in Gamecock Terry on a second and 14. He's going to go to his backup running back, Alan Morris. He's got eight yards on the carry now. Third and six, Mikey Keene driving this team right down the field against the number two team in the nation. Keene's going to fire towards the end zone. Jordan Davis reaches out, but he is quickly wrapped up and pulled backwards. That's an 11-yard catch now. First and goal. Keene with Bowman beside him. He doesn't pitch it. Keeps it himself, and he's got a touchdown. Six-yard run for Mikey Keene, and the Knights quickly on the board here. 7-0 as the Gamecocks will trot out onto the field, and Mikey Keene gave them his all on that first drive. A couple big runs by Keene, and he looks to set up the Knights in great position right now early in this game. First and 10 for Julius Canary on his first pass of the day. That one sails past LaVesa. Carroll London Hall is the one to deflect it down. Now second and 10. Canary's going to go off the read option. Got some space on the right side, but quickly the Cavalry comes in. He is brought down after just a gain of five yards. Third and five now. Canary in this offense trying not to go three and out. A disappointing start if you do. Canary fake to Lloyd. Haven't ran it with Lloyd a single time, and Canary holds on too long. Nine-yard loss, and the Gamecocks will have to punt it away as the Knights will start with excellent field position right now on this second drive. First and 10, Mikey Keene, another read option. This time he's got all kinds of space. Missed tackle from behind by TJ Sanders. Another one, Mikey Keene into the end zone. 42 yards out as Kawan Banks finally caught up to him, but it was way too late, and that is just a col collaboration of missed tackles and missed opportunities by the Gamecock defense on second and seven, though. Landon Sampson starts the drive finally with a catch now, second and ten later on that same drive. Canary eyeing his man, and he just gets hit and barely lucky enough to get rid of this one as it falls harmlessly to the ground. Now third and ten, facing another Three and out to start the day. Canary is going to fake it to Lloyd again. This time he's rolling out of the pocket to his right side. And he's hit again as he throws. He has started one for four. Only 10 yards through the air now. So the Knights with a chance to go up 21-0 right here. Mikey Keene's going to go to Demarcus Bowman right down the middle of the field. And that is 13 yards. Probably about 10 of those before he was even touched. So second and six now for the Knights. Going to bring their man in motion. The big tight end is going to take it to the right side. Now Keene's going to snap it, and he's just going to have to eat the sack. He just was staring receivers down, didn't even have a chance to get rid of it, and he just had to get that one, take that sack, and go with it. And now on third and 13, this one is to Martin, and they're going to give him the first down. Steven Martin looked to maybe be a half inch short, but they're going to give him the first down. Now Demarcus Bowman on the speed option cuts it back inside, and he's got all kinds of space past the 20. Mark him down at about the 17 now, third and four. 
Mikey Keene out of the shotgun. This time he wants to go to the air. He's going to be under pressure. Fires off his back foot, and that's a touchdown. Jordan Johnson. Johnson stopped at the one-yard line, and Mikey Keene starts the day 4 4 88 yards and a touchdown and also adding two touchdowns on the ground. Marshawn Lloyd now in second and five. He's got a first down run, eight yards on the ground there as this offense looks to get going here as we near the end of the first quarter. Julius Kaneri throws this one and it's almost intercepted. Keontis Thompson in coverage there. We are now well into the second quarter on a second and five. Mikey King continues the success on the ground. Emory Floyd Jr. has to bring him down in the second level there. Second and 12 now. Mikey Keene out of the shotgun formation to Marcus Bowman. Beside him instead, Jordan Davis is going to block for Bowman. Bowman just fires himself up the middle, and that's a six-yard run. What could have been stopped much sooner if the Gamecocks were ready for it. Now third and six, the Knights snap it back. Keene wants to throw this one, fires at the last second, and Jordan Johnson had it in his hands, had a first down, maybe even a touchdown. The defender was off balance, but instead the Gamecocks are going to get the ball back on first and ten. Marshawn loses three. The Knights are playing outstanding defense now. Third and 13. You desperately need this. Kaneri steps up. Fires to DJ Long. He's open. Tries to cut it back inside. But a 36-yard gain is where it will stand now. Second and 11. Kaneri wants to throw. He pumps fakes. Rolling out all the way around. Getting past the defenders. And he does it. And he gets more. Nine yards on the run. Was scared that one was going to be stopped. Short of the line of scrimmage, but he used all his speed there to get past those defenders. Now, Marshawn on a third and two just settles for the first down instead of the big gain. He's got three yards on the ground there. Now, first and ten, Kaneri under center. We don't see them under center very often. This is a play action. Firing to the open, man. Corey Rucker, touchdown. 31 yards out. The Gamecocks finally get on the board here with about four minutes and 44 seconds left in the second quarter. This was just a crossing route extravaganza and Corey Rucker got lost in the sauce he was able to get open behind the defenders and get a touchdown there beautiful delivery from Julius Canary and a great job selling the play action on that play right there as we get back on the field with Mikey Keene and company he's going to start the drive with a Jordan Davis pass he's going to push his man off of him past the 40 in another big game by Jordan Davis this one will be credited with 18 yards Debo Williams was there and O'Donnell Fortune were there as well uh, or Keenan Nelson excuse me Nelson was too small to bring him down and he just pushed right by him as um yeah that's just a crazy crazy catch and run second and three Mikey Keene's gonna fire this time he's got Steven Martin again seven yards and another first down but they will face a third and ten now the Knights Going to be in the shotgun formation. Keen's going to go for the screen. It's going to be Demarcus Bowman getting it. But this time, TJ Barrett is going to bring him down. And that is a big, big stop there. But a fourth and seven. They're going to go for it. Mikey Keen out of the shotgun. Wants to throw again. Fires to the flats to Jordan Davis who cuts it back. He is stopped well short. And they credit him with the first down. Oh my goodness. Another spotty spot for this referee team. And the Knights are getting very generous first down markings there. A six-yard run for Demarcus Bowman. They're set up with a third and eight after a penalty. As Mikey Keene takes the snap, he wants to throw this time. Instead, he's under pressure and he gets sacked. Stone Blanton comes on the linebacker blitz. And Alex Huntley brings him down after the help from Blanton. Now fourth and 15. This one is not a chip shot, honestly. It's going to be a long field goal. And this one's hooked wide left the entire way. And the Knights... After scoring 21 in the first quarter, they've yet to score in this second quarter. Now, first and 10, Julius Kinnear is going to fire right down the seam. Time on row. He's going to catch that one in stride. That's an 18-yard game for the tight end, but now they face a third and 12. Kinnear, play action, wants to roll out. Instead, he plants his feet and fires to Brandon Robinson. Breaking tackles off to the races past the 20. And he's down around the 19-yard line. That's a 27-yard run on his second reception of the day. Brandon Robinson showing excellent speed and an ability to get away from the defense as he just pushes that man off of him until the cavalry comes in and brings him down now on the next play first and 10 Kaneri off the read option going to cut it to the right side Marshawn picks up the block touchdown Julius Kaneri 19 yards out and the Gamecocks now trail by seven right before halftime the UCF Golden Knights will have a chance here on second and 16 with about 20 seconds left they've got one time out but Mikey Keene just has to chuck that one out of bounds. And his first half has been magnificent. If you see his statistics there, now third and 16. 
Mikey Keene. You've got to think this is just going to be a Hail Mary kind of play. Keene is going to fire it deep down the right side. Banks in coverage, but Stephen Martin comes back under it. And that's a 30-yard catch, though. The Knights with a chance here to get a field goal right before halftime. Castellanos with the excellent hold, and that one is right down the middle. Two seconds left in half. We would go into the third quarter down by 10. So the Gamecocks dug themselves into a hole, but they are slowly trying to crawl their way out here to start the second half. They're going to go with an option. Marshawn Lloyd's got some great blocks. It's a missed tackle on the edge across the 50 and the 40, and nobody is even close to Marshawn. Wow, what a start to the second half. Marshawn Lloyd off the pitch from Canary. He held it to the very last second. And Marshawn just was not going to be denied. As you can see him there, Jennings is the closest man, and he's still about 10 yards behind. The Gamecocks down by three now. They have fought their way back here in this one. Third and eight for the next UCF possession, and it sails out of bounds. Mikey Keene under pressure there, and the pressure of the situation could be getting to the Knights here. Second and four for the Gamecocks. Marshawn's going to pick up where he left off. He is hit kind of hard from the left side, but that's still going to be a six-yard run, and he has been a mainstay in this offense since we started this series. Now, first and 10, Julius Canary wants to throw. Instead, he's forced to roll back a little bit. Finds Corey Rucker, who just gets bounced off the two defenders out of bounds. Five yards on the gain now, or on the pass now. Canary out of the shotgun. This time, it's another pass on second and five. He's going to go underneath again. DJ Long, the true freshman, Going to get a nice 10-yard gain there. He has contributed this season much more than any other true freshman we've had before now. First and 10. Marshawn right down the middle. Off the inside zone, but he's tripped up after 9. Third and 1 now. Canary is going to find himself under center again. This one's a run to Marshawn who spins off of his man, and he gets the first down. So they live to fight another day, but it's a third and goal now. Under pressure, goal line stand. Canary wants to throw off the play action. Scott Hall, touchdown. Beautifully drawn up play by the offensive coordinator. Hall was just going to go in the opposite direction of everybody else, and that was just a miscommunication by the Knights secondary, and they let him get wide open as we have fought back from 21-0. We now are up 28 to 24 by four points. There's Jordan Johnson trying to get the Knights offense back on track with a 14-yard catch there on the slant. Now first and 10, Johnson's going to come in motion. Keen's going to fake it to Johnson and Bowman, but instead he meets the big defensive lineman Rory Patrick, and that is a big loss of three yards now, second and 13. This time Lee's going to come in motion. Just a lot of motion in this offense. It can be confusing at times. And Demarcus Bowman's got a nice run. Rory Patrick somehow catches up to him from behind. He was slowed down a little bit, and that would be a 16-yard run now. Third and eight for the Knights. Mikey Keene's going to fire to Townsend, who gets past all of them in the middle. Xavier Townsend with a 14-yard crossing route. First down on third down now. First and 10. Keene's going to go off the play action again. This time it's Bowman again. Anthony Rose brings him down. The sure-handed tackle there saves a possible touchdown now. Second and 11 under a minute to go in this third quarter. Keen off the play action. No, instead he gives it to Bowman on the counter, but he's got nowhere to go. Ran all the way he could up the left side, but he just couldn't get to the line of scrimmage. Now third and 11. Mikey Keen under pressure. He's going to fire to the end zone. Got a man and he drops it. Jordan Johnson drops the touchdown, and they would have to settle for a short field goal now. 28-27 as Julius Canary starts the next drive on a read option. Cutting to the outside across the 50. And he is muscled out of bounds after 29 yards. What a run by Julius Canary. He has turned on the Jets here in this first half or in this second half. Six rushes, 75 yards. Facing a third and six here to start the fourth quarter. Canary takes the snap. He wants to throw on the run. Scott Hall open on the corner route, and he's got a first down and then some 22 yards. The Gamecocks have reached 350 total offensive yards here in this one. Now first and 10. Canary's going to go on the inside zone. This one's Marshawn at the 10. He's going to muscle his way past the first defender, and he's into the end zone. 17 yards. Marshawn Lloyd, what a big grown man run as he is going to break the record for career rushing touchdowns at South Carolina. He is going to set it at 32. We'll have to see if anybody will ever be able to break that because he is going to continue adding to that total the rest of this season. Now first and 10, Mikey Keene's going to go to Alan Morris. He's got some room off the option, but he's tripped up by Debo Williams. 
thankfully saving a touchdown with the ankle tackle. 35-27 is where the score stands now. One touchdown away, an eight-point score right now. This one goes to Alan Morris. Again, a missed tackle in the backfield, and he runs untouched for 13 yards. That is another Knights first down. Now second and three. We are right around five and a half minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. The defense needs to step up. This one's a pass to the open man and Lee is going to make a diving grab and he keeps both feet inbounds. That is Quan Lee, his third catch of the day. Arguably his most important. That one's going to give him 41 yards so far today. Now third and four. It's going to be a big, big chance here. Keen wants to go to the end zone. Rolls to the right to the air and it's intercepted by Justin Birdsong. The transfer from last year, he had to sit out a year now. He's getting his chance to impact this defense, and he makes a beautiful read on it, jumping in the air and snagging that one. Now second and 11, the Gamecocks with a chance to just end this one right now. DJ Long drops the pass, though, and that is going to set them up with a third and long. You don't want to force anything, but you also really don't want to settle for a short pass the clock is not moving so they can take all the time in the world third and 11 off the play action goes to scott hall who catches it but he had to come back to it and because of that it is not a first down so the ucf knights live to fight another day right here right around three minutes remaining on second and eight alan morris pushing blanton to the ground he's going to get six yards on that one now third and one Mikey Keene has Morris and Riley in the backfield. Bowman is out of it right now. And now Xavier Townsend comes in motion. It's going to be a fake, a little bit of miscommunication. And Mikey Keene pushing everyone down, and he's got a first down. Oh, man, that one could have been tragic for the Knights. But instead, Keene just keeps his leg moving, and he is going to get a first down. But now a third and 12 off for nothing here. It's going to be a pass to Griffin, and they just make a nice decision there. Tyler Griffin gets eight of those 12 they needed now fourth and five with three timeouts still a minute and a half remains Mikey Keen out of the shotgun this one's gonna be a pass again Keen wants to go to the air rolling out under pressure and he's brought down Gilbert Edmond off the right side Alex Huntley I believe was there first Mikey Keen was able to avoid Huntley but after that Edmond was right behind him to bring him down and the Gamecocks defense sets the offense up for a big Big chance here on third and five for the game. Kaneri keeps it himself, and he's got the first down as he slides down. And your Gamecocks are going to be 5-0 and here to start the season on a third and eight. They can settle this one now and just run the clock all the way down. Marshawn Lloyd on the draw. It's going to be a couple yards, and that is it, folks. The Gamecocks are 5-0 and to start the year for the first time in the series as the number two ranked team in the country takes down the UCF Knights 35-27 in an absolute thriller and an absolute magnificent comeback by this Gamecocks team. Obviously, you never want to be in that situation in the first place, but after allowing 21 straight points unanswered in that first quarter up until, what, the last 45 seconds, you only allow six points the rest of the game. That is a masterclass by the Gamecocks defensively, offensively. Everybody came in and they saw how bad it was in that first quarter. They really played at their A game. Obviously, if this is a good, better team than the UCF Knights, you probably don't come back from that. But they were able to do it in, in stunning fashion there. Marshawn Lloyd carried the way a lot. 82 yards, a 17-yard touchdown run. He just had himself a magnificent day. Offensively, we had a lot yet a lot less yards than they did. We had more rushing yards on less attempts. Obviously, we had more touchdowns on the ground. Passing yards, we were way less. We were better on third downs. We were ba both yeah, we were better in the red zone. We did not score at or lose miss an opportunity in the red zone. They were 75% because they missed that or got intercepted that one time. Um, and then they had the one turnover. We have limited our turnovers a lot these last few weeks. Um, but I was really impressed with the resiliency of this team. Julius Canary started out struggling. He finished with only 13 of 23, 186 yards and two touchdowns. He also added eight rushes, 82 yards and a touchdown on the ground. His long of 29. Marshawn Lloyd, give him a, a snap, a slap on the back or something. 20 attempts, 133 yards, two touchdowns. He had that 82 yard run to start the second half. Now Scott Hall, four for 38 and a touchdown. DJ Long. 3 for 52, Brandon Robinson 2 for 32, Corey Rucker 2 for 36 and a touchdown. Obviously, for whatever reason, whenever I try to be realistic with the passing game, 
we don't spread the ball to one guy more than anybody else really i think scott hall probably has the most receptions on the team right now but it's not by a lot um defensively let's see who allowed a sack right today um huffman allowed one sack today julius canary went down just one time stone blanton led the team with seven tackles one for loss anthony rose had six and also one t for l rory patrick had six total four tackles for loss and two sacks of those now debo williams with six total no tackles for loss today rory patrick had two sacks gilbert edmund had a sack and alex huntley is credited with a sack as well kicking we didn't have to kick it any so thankfully clark was five for five on the extra points but what a game what a comeback 21 points down is not an easy deficit it's not something that you want to do often but when it happens you gotta admit it's kind of fun unfortunately for us that close game was enough to kick us out of the number two spot and slide us back to number three as we have Oklahoma jumping over top of us. They were able to beat Georgia 27 to 21. Georgia is now number 20 in the country and man, they have fallen. They are one in three to start the season. I mean, look at this schedule though. They beat, lost to Mississippi who is 16th, lost to us who's number three right now, beat San Jose State and then they lost to Oklahoma who's number two right now. That is a brutal schedule, but right now, the top four is looking like Ohio State, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Utah. Utah jumps into the top four after they beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame, who was formerly number four, falls all the way to number 10. Between that, you've got Florida, North Carolina, Penn State, USC, Alabama, Baylor, Texas A&M, Oregon, Washington, and Wake Forest to round out the top 15. So a good arrangement of teams there. Alabama does jump back into the top 10 after beating Mississippi. They had originally fell kind of out of the top 10 because of their loss to Missouri in that upset game. Uh, Missouri is now 1-3, and three, so that is an even bigger upset. But they've now beat Texas in overtime. They've also now beaten Mississippi in overtime, or Ole Miss. And Ole Miss, unfortunately for them, that is their first loss of the season. So they fall from number 19 or number 14 to number 16 now. So that's a tough fall for them. But they have Oregon this week to have and take on a tough, tough opponent there out of the Pac-12. As far as the Heisman race goes, we take a look at that pretty much every week to see if anything's changing. Javante Barnes is still the leader right now. Last game, he had 186 yards. So far this year, he has... Um, 130 rushing attempts, 792 yards, seven touchdowns. What's he got receiving wise? He has got seven catches for 99 yards. Nothing all that crazy. Then we've got Trey Benson, a fullback for some reason. Trey Benson has 62 rushes, a 410 yards, and seven touchdowns. Receiving wise, he has 18, 356 yards, and four touchdowns. So a big, big contributor there at the fullback position for FSU. Now Lou Nichols, the third out of Central Michigan. He is our third guy here. He's a senior 5'11 running back, so he's a short king there. 106 rushing attempts, 781 yards. He has 10 rushing touchdowns, and then through the air, he has 11 catches for 207 yards. Travion Henderson there for Ohio State. He has 56 total rushes for the Buckeyes, but 439 yards, 5 touchdowns. So he's not having the greatest season right now. He is kind of... Um, very low usage as a senior, but we'll have to see how that ends up for him. And Drake May is having a magnificent season, 182.5 QBR, 82 completions on 129 attempts, 16 touchdowns, and only two interceptions. He is probably going to win Heisman, I would imagine, but he hasn't got a trophy yet. And where do we stand in the conference standings right now? We are... Let's see, number one in our side of the conference, the Sooners technically are tied with us, and technically they're better than us for a conference record. They have played five straight SEC matchups, and they have won all of them here in their first season. It's actually going to be another two weeks, no, another week before they can even take on an out-of-conference opponent, and then it's Kansas and Rutgers, then they jump right back into um, SEC play. And I mean, look at this right here. This is a market on your date or on your calendar type of game number three south carolina assuming we're still undefeated at that point and number two oklahoma assuming they're still undefeated at that point that is a collision course right there only one of us can make this conference championship so it's going to be a dog fight to do that florida stands at number five in the country they are three and one to start the year their only loss coming to uh, obviously Oklahoma Missouri is one and three the rest of the SEC East is struggling Marcus Satterfield out there for the volunteers got them a win to start the year and ever since then it's been nothing but losses Kentucky two and two on the year but they are zero and two in conference play they have only played top five opponents they lost to Oklahoma 
lost to Florida getting blown out. So hopefully we can get our revenge because they beat us last year in an upset. I'm hoping we can take them down this year. Georgia, as we saw, started out 0-3. Vanderbilt, 0-4. They haven't won a game yet. Wake Forest whooped them 31-3. Arkansas whooped them 55-28. Mississippi, Ole Miss whooped them. And Memphis also beat them by six points there. As far as the Western side of things goes, Alabama is leading the way there. They are 4-1. and one. Ole Miss backs them up at 3-1. and one. Mississippi State at 3-2. and two. Texas at 2-3. and three. Arkansas 2-3. and three. Uh, Auburn at 3-2. and two. Texas A&M at 3-2. and two. And LSU sitting at 2-3. and three. This side of the conference, in my opinion, is a whole lot more talented than the Eastern side. As always, Vanderbilt is the worst. But then you've got teams like Tennessee, who's fallen off. Missouri, who's fallen off. It's a tough tough spot here in the sec but you cannot take anything for granted as next episode we will have to face off against the two and two kentucky wildcats that rankings wise or ratings wise i should say they're not that bad they have us beat in one category and that's going to be in their passing defense we are slightly better than them in passing defense but they also have us beat in turnover differential we are minus two still we're number 93 in the country they average about three turnovers a game um, but fortunately for us, we have them beat in points per game. Total offense by a lot. They have a very lackluster offense. Rushing offense by a good amount. Passing offense by a good amount. Total defense by a good amount. We're over half way higher than they are on the defensive side of things. And total rushing defense, or rushing, yeah, rushing defense by a large, large margin. They're one of the last 20 teams in the country when it comes to rushing defense. Kentucky, though, so far... They are 2-2. Two and two. Their average attendance, they get about 60,000 fans a game, so it should be a packed-out house, especially for an SEC matchup. And as we can see, their team leaders coming up here. Um, they have Deuce Hogan, or whatever his name is. I can't remember what his name is for whatever reason. 115 attempts, 53 completions. He has 734 yards, 7 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. And they've got their back, their running back right. 38 attempts, 200 yards, 3 touchdowns. I believe their starting running back may be injured. Um, as it said back here, but it's going to be an interesting matchup. Last year, like I said, they came out and they upset us, um, and we're looking to get some revenge this year, so I'd be interested to see how this one is going to unfold. As always, though, hope you have all enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed this type of format a little bit more, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. It helps me out. It helps you guys out so much. Thank you all for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, y'all.